You need a hard part and better really? product, obviously. That's, I, that's what I need. Those are the Look, words. Hard, hard part, part. Hard part. Hard part. Nothing hard soft part. about this. No. Might get ugly. We don't have time to screw around. What do we do? I will not be the last thing on that table. We're sizzling over here. Best one yet? For sure. <laughs> oh, oh, no, <laughs> Andy! <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Zach. How are you, Zach? I came back from Fire Island for this. We did really good. No. Whatever we do stuffing-wise has to be very much like in communication right. with what's happening. We need the to complement each other right? yeah. and work. My mother made the most amazing cornbread dressing. No eggs as binder. She made sausage and there was lots of jalapeno, lots yeah. of sage. She made her own cornbread. You like just Ooh. you you add a lot of stock and then it, it becomes very it's very wet and yeah. mushy and you just bake the out of it wow. until it all comes back together. Talk to us about the jalapenos. She would take whole jalapenos and not seeded, just like chop them up and saute them with the, uh, the onions and the celery. What kind of sausage? Sage, spicy, uh, breakfasty type sausage. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so good. But she would fortify it with a lot of garlic, a lot of sage, and then you'd get the jalapeno. So, I mean, it's still sort of breakfasty, but then it kind of pulls it into this kind of Mexican-y, Tex-Mex-y yeah. situation. Rick, that sounds delicious. And I know we're gonna run into like a little bit of a regional issue, but like, I don't ever think of cornbread stuffing when I think of Thanksgiving. My baseline awesome recipe like for stuffing um, is the Victoria Granoff so Simple good. is Best. It's so good. Where it's like big, torn, like coarse pieces of bread, like kind of country bread. There's a lot of brightness, there's a lot of vinegar, um, and there's a lot of butter as well. It's yeah. hard because there's a part of me that wants cornbread, yeah. you know, Scoop breakfast sausage, jalapeno. I mean, maybe there's a way to fuse We'll call it stuffing, even if it's not stuffed inside the yeah. bird. Yes. Yes. And we are not stuffing the stuffing inside the bird. No, right? no, no, yeah, we're agreed? No, okay, no, cool. No, no. Cool, just checking that yes. I still no, like yes. you guys. Rick, I feel like there's no question. Stuffing well, is all I mean, you. Yeah, all Slash. me. I think I need that guy Ooh. Part to be my stuffing partner. Yeah, Bad boys. Yeah. Now? <laughs> Apparently. Yeah. There's two guys I would trust to make stuffing on Thanksgiving. Rick and Chris. Right here. Right. Plus, it'll be an excuse myself. to eat, like, a lot of bread. Yeah, right. I mean, yeah. yeah. You're good at that. <laughs> um, Thanks, I think. <laughs> so I'm not actually making stuffing right now. I'm making breakfast for Morocco, and I brought a secret weapon with me, my dad. That's my good side. <laughs> I was born in Austin. He still lives down there, and I actually flew this guy up yesterday to come and to the kitchen and school Chris on Texas dressing. This started about two years ago for my 80th birthday. I came over here and cooked breakfast and they loved my beans, so he wanted some more, so I had to cook beans at home and bring them over here. They're not gonna refry them. And I actually also brought some duck fat flour tortillas because you can't have tacos without flour tortillas. This is part of my little plan to get prime Chris into the world of Mexican-ish jalapeno spicy cornbread dressing. That secret weapon. Hey guys, it's breakfast time. All right. <laughs> Woo! Oh, it's hot. I'm not gonna be able to taste the coffee or frankly anything for the rest of the, the day, but that's fine. It's worth it. Thank you for breakfast. Mm -hmm. Now you've had this taco, you ready to put some fire in our dressing? I guess so. I feel like this is like, Thanksgiving, but with a little, little, little extra going on. What I'm interested in is seeing your vision. You know what I mean? Like what you guys have been doing for Thanksgiving. I don't want to pull any punches here. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna eat this taco. Then I'm gonna make another taco. I'm gonna eat that. Then I'm gonna get my head in the game, and then let's talk. Oh my God, I'm done <laughs> tomorrow. We're here, man. We made it. Stuffing. Stuffing. You and me get to decide now. Breakfast sausage. Yeah. 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 Butter. Sage, rosemary, parsley. Egg is definitely part of my stuffing paradigm. My problem with the egg is when you use so much egg that you've gone into a savory bread pudding. Jalapeno, Jalapeno heat. heat. Sourdough versus cornbread. Chunky, chunky. or crumbly. Um, chunky. I, I like that, chunky. Remember that, um, the fried rice stuffing? It was new, but it had all the flavors that I want. Well, let's just file right. that one. I think probably the biggest thing is like yeah. bread. bread, wheat or corn, right? Or potentially right. something else. Right, and is it torn? Is it cubed? cubed? I feel like heat and acid cut the richness of all of this. Let's just put wild card down. Yeah. Can you draw a joker? 
No, not at all. <laughs> I wanted you to experience, you know, what I grew up with, you know, because yeah. I know that you, this is a particular style of, st of dressing mm -hmm. that you've never had before. Well, let's start by checking that out and then see where we want to go. All right, cool. Cool. So we're actually going to make my mom's cornbread jalapeno dressing. This is the sausage. sausage this is a okay. breakfast sausage. Uh, we got the spicy kind. Spicy kind. I think you have I really like cornbread dressings, and I think part of the reason is when you take the time to make your own cornbread, right. you know, and you don't make it too sweet, you know, because a lot of the purchased cornbreads or cornbread mixes, they're really sweet. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's just so much better. Well, and depending on what part of the country you're in, too, it's either going to be more corn-based or more uh, wheat-based. When I first moved up to New York uh, from Texas, I was actually shocked. The cornbread up here, because it's nothing like what you'd get in the South. Chopped with seeds? Yes. Uh, just checking. I want you to present me, you know, your kind of vision. Right. And like, I'll, I want to present to you like a little of like my vision. Yeah, yeah. It, it doesn't make sense to start editing our, each other yet. Uh, so that's schmaltz. Uh, it's basically lard from a chicken. It just adds like a really, really nice richness. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh. <laughs> Chicken fat is delicious. Okay. Whatever. No seeds. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you might as well have taken a bite of a bell pepper. Oh my God. <laughs> I don't know what you guys were using this morning. All yeah, right. all that. <laughs> Screw that. <We're... laughs> all right, good. I feel like I'm in good hands. This isn't like Andy and Brad sitting there yelling at each other, you know, just to get laughs. This is the BA master stock, right? This is so, yeah, this is the Thanksgiving version. It gets wet, huh? It gets wet. Mmm. <laughs> You get a little bit of heat but it's already, like, but it's not a lot, but it's just, it, it's warm. It's just the yeah. back of your throat. Slap test approved. The forking on the top is just to make these little bits get really brown and crispy. We've got your dressing in the oven. What I want to show you is uh, the simple is best dressing that we ran in the magazine, I want to say six or seven even maybe years ago. And what I think is interesting about this is this is the first time that I had ever seen really loose, torn pieces of bread, but it was simple. And I'm hoping this will kind of give us like our two kind of, you know, reference points. We went to this super special bakery in Bushwick called La Primerie um, and got some of their sourdough. And I don't know if we want to use sourdough ultimately, but I wanted to try it today just yeah, from yeah. the standpoint of figuring out whether this is a way to kind of impart acid and character to a yeah. stuffing. What I like about their breads there is like, is there a pronounced crust? Yes. Is there like a lot of like kind of caramelization on the outside? Yes. But it's not over the top. Mm -hmm. To me, it's not crazy sour. No, it's really it's like, pleasant. Yeah. It's very nice. Like there's a little mm -hmm. bit of tang in there. I want to dry this out, but I want to dry it out purposefully. I don't want to just let it go stale because then your bread kind of ends up being rock hard. So we're just doing like torn big pieces here. So this is just going to go in the oven, dry out a little bit get maybe just the tiniest bit of color, but because we've already got a pretty, you know, decent crust on this bread. What we're gonna be using is pretty similar to yeah. what was in your recipe, which yeah, yeah. is like kind of what, what you want. I, I'm gonna leave the heat out just so we have a, yeah, yeah. something to compare. We just wanna cook this down in the butter, let it get jammy, soft, before we put our garlic in and then cook out a little bit of white wine on top of it. Bread picked up, tiny bit of color here, a little more here. Andy's oven running a little hot. Impressive. Read into that everything you want to, okay? You know, I'm gonna dump in our harder herbs, okay. the, um, the rosemary, sage, and the thyme in there and just knock it around for a minute. Wait, so is there is there meat in this? There's no meat in this. Uh. Simple is best, not like lard and then like every animal you might hope to find on a farm. <laughs> the proteins in the egg are gonna set and coagulate slowly. So that way you can get a pretty clean slice and or scoop of the stuffing.
All right, so bread is hydrated, and um, the danger now is that if I keep mixing and screwing around with this, it's all gonna kind of turn to mush. It's a lot of herb. Yeah. Parsley as an herb, I mean, it's, it's, it's got a lot of firepower. You know, vegetal, kind of like that cutting kind of action. I might butter the top of the foil just so I don't get any oh. stickage. Why, what? I thought what? you were gonna butter the top of this. Don't is do that the... what you want? I mean, that's what I want, but I... So we're gonna come back and we're gonna taste these side by side in just a little bit um, as soon as they're both ready. So we've got like very different approaches, but to get to something that kind of does the same thing. Smells good. Smells real good. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, stuffing. Do you? I feel like you'd be somebody who'd be like, oh no. Like, I hate I stuffing. I hate stuffing. Yeah. But if I eat it, it's gotta be like cold, you know? That is so you. <laughs> Everything about that, is that so you. is just wrong. So let's start with the cornbread jalapeno. It's holding together. I mean, it's it's not like... Yeah, no, I mean, it's yeah. definitely holding together. Yeah. This is a, is a very Thanksgiving smell to me. That, that corn, the pork, the jalapeno. There's definite, definite mm -hmm. heat. And the flavor is excellent. This one, it's set. Like, you wouldn't mm -hmm. necessarily know that there's egg in there unless you knew that there was egg in there. The thing that I like about this that I miss from this is the crunch. I think that's something that I would, I want in our final version. The herb, it's there, but it's like, it's not like super forward. Mm -hmm. Richard, would there ever be a scenario <laughs> where you would ever, under any circumstances, serve this stuffing instead of this one at your Thanksgiving? I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> this one you can eat as a, as a meal. That one you, you could. All the, all the food groups oh, in like, one I dish. Like, it's just amazing seeing where you get it from. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> I thought we would kind of taste both and be like, okay, well clearly the answer is out here. I don't really have that sense of clarity right now at all. Thank you so much for coming, you know, Richard, all the way from Texas. Not only for this, but most importantly, to make us breakfast. I've enjoyed it. Two years ago when I came and, mm -hmm. and cooked breakfast, and I said, well, I'll, I'll do it again. We uh, yeah. remembered. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know what I want right now. Right. I want an old-fashioned donut. Why did you just say that, Morocco? God damn it. You know? How? No icing, no glaze. I just want an old-fashioned donut. All right, well there you straight just up. Lost a little me bit of nutmeg, you know. Or a you lot can of dip yours glaze. in Starburst or whatever you want to do with it. Okay. <laughs> whatever. I feel like what we need to add to I... the board is this question of corn flavor. I don't think it's a question. Whoa. Yeah. Easy with that. I want the best of both, right? I want that corn flavor and then the crispy, soft. All right, for bread, let's put sourdough as option one. And then option two below it, your cornbread that you made, let's cube it and dry it. Let's use that as like one root. Meat, breakfast sausage, yes. I think a modest amount of egg, we agreed. Herbs. To me, the sage and the thyme were the best bits. Sage and thyme, heat and acid. I think white wine was working and heat. Let's maybe just try like just like a straight up hot chili. And then there's this issue of like the corn flavor. Let's try to work it in, in a few different ways. So option right. one is toasted meal. And then the other is? And is butter bits. What do you think about a fourth? What about if we got some corn nuts and just like grind the shit out of them? Cause I think you'll get a lot more of that corn flavor. So it's one stuffing with four corn options. Right, oh, yeah. right. And one of them just doesn't have the wheat bread. One of them is all cornbread. Oh. That's what I'm saying. Let's get toasting our bread. We're gonna make sausage, and then it's all gonna come together, and we're gonna be out of here by six, and it's gonna be cool. 80s music, coffee, and donuts? Yes. <laughs> like toasted corn. Uh, so these are corn nuts. These are just pretty standard. This is the same corn that's used in uh, pozole. It tastes like, like frito powder, going. but without like so much salt. You yeah, know? 
or grease. This is gonna be the aromatic base for all four options that we're about to do. We're ready for sausage now, right? Yep. So this is basically a flavored ground pork situation. Adding brown sugar, salt. Garlic. Sage, sage thyme. We're gonna double grind this. Oh. So we're gonna attempt to double grind this with my, this is so fucking. Is it sweet? Yeah, it's fine. I mean, it's bigger than that. We're gonna paddle together this sausage. It's just ground meat at this point. Yeah. Salt. <laughs> um, that's You're beeping. bread. All right, we're going in, tablespoon. Because I've already touched it, might as well make a little patty. Oh, black pepper. Yep, it's coloring nicely. This does not have the black pepper. I need the world's salt. smallest sausage party. <laughs> <laughs> I think you can use more salt and frankly, like another tablespoon of sugar. It's weirdly dry. I know. In the, the next version, it should be 25% fat. Crank that pepper. World's smallest sausage party, take two. It's gonna be delicious, Morocco. My next move, garlic powder. I think powder. The tiniest bit of yeah. like a hot, hot paprika. paprika. What about allspice? Yeah. Great. Good talk. I came back from Fire Island for this. <laughs> Already better. That's fine. We're just gonna put in a little rogues gallery of items yeah. here. I mean, it can't get worse. We're gonna cook off the sausage. I just wanna brown it. I don't want it to cook all the way through because it's gonna cook in the oven. Still More salt. lacking just a tiny bit of fat. We up the salt and tastes like really nice breakfast sausage. Mm -hmm. We're ready. Yeah assembling four separate tests. One of them has cornbread, cornbread base. Three of them will have sourdough base. They will all have sausage, and they will and all have like our aromatics. aromatic base over there. One part, three parts, boom. So this is our mixture um, of onion, celery. celery, garlic, Thai chili, and then finished, ooh, you know what I didn't do? What? White wine. Stuffing number one is pure cornbread that we've toasted hard. Toasted hard and put away wet. <laughs> <laughs> so mixture number two, this is our um, toasted cornmeal. Buttery nugs, number three. This is our cornbread and sourdough hybrid. I like that one. I like this one too. Going for flavor. 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 Yeah. Splash more. Yeah. Last one, corn nuts. Corn nuts. That's gotta sit for a minute. All right, let's transfer okay, the others. Cool. Fine, fine. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine. It's a science. We're bumping it. Bumping. Yeah, color. Oh yeah. Look. And they're like a little cool. souffléed. Look, look at that, it's set. Hmm. Switch. Switch. Ooh. It's tender, it's flavorsome. It's not that dissimilar, you know, from your version that you did with your dad this morning, but. Honestly, it's, it's also a bit boring. Here we have our toasted um, cornmeal version. It just looks weird. I don't hate it, but I, I, I like flavor-wise, but what it did visually is, is, is just super upsetting. Yeah. So this is buttery nubs. I think I'm gonna like this one. It doesn't know what it wants to be. The sourdough absorbed some of the butter as well. But I don't know that texturally it's, it has a clear identity. This is the ground up corn nuts. They smell so intensely nutty and corny. I feel like I smell it a lot. I don't know that I taste it as much as I- Really? Expected to. I don't know that sourdough is the right play if we want to go with this. I think if we go with the corn nuts, we almost have to construct the entire dish around that flavor. This is kind of bringing it on so many different levels. It's a little aggressive. I think we'd have to rethink the bread, the sausage, the onions, the celery, they work nicely. Mm -hmm. Also, frankly, that could pair well with rice, that flavor. One of our favorite dishes ever, fried rice, 
and then a little bit of like soy sauce and like this the big chunks of stuffing, cornbread, cornbread stuffing. stuffing, you know, kind of all in there. And it was so, so, so good. And like internally, we've just been sort of saying like, wow, like how amazing to kind of do a riff on that. We're feeling really good about our direction of our cornbread, you know, and adding um, toasted, you know, the corn nut powder to that. And then also using just like a rough torn um, country loaf with corn nut powder and pick it up Monday. It was a great day, are you kidding me? Why, are you not feeling that? <laughs> that was good, good, yeah. con good contact. Yeah. Can live with that. Mike got it. Yeah. Sound guy's go, clapping. Come on. <laughs> You'd think that I'd be more peppy with all that sugar I just ate. I know. Yeah, I'm like. They got us donuts. I know. It's Finally. Sweet. What I wanna talk about is the, the moment where I have to look Adam Rappaport in the eye and tell him that we're putting pulverized corn nuts in the stuffing. I don't feel like the same ironclad sense of clarity right. that like that's absolutely the right direction right. to go in. Let's make a really flavorful stuffing. Let's treat it the way we want it to be treated. Let's give it like a bigger afterlife, right? Of like things you can do with it. And maybe we taste it today and go, oh my God, we were right. We're first so time. Yeah. <laughs> first step today, we've got cornbread plus corn nut side by side with white bread, non-sourdough plus corn nut. From there, I think like we have some rice cooking. We're gonna like see about making a chili oil and whatever happens, we've only got today. Rick's getting cornbread set up, dried out in the oven, just like we did yesterday. A little bit of a toast. And then I'm doing non-sourdough country loaf. On top of both of these, we're gonna be doing corn nut powder. Donut, can I help you? Here, you do those. Might be able to taste it. This is like a very dense bread, and it's gonna take a lot more liquid to kind of hydrate this fully. We're gonna do one aromatic base and then divide it between the two here. <laughs> One of the, it's not, it's actually, it's actually. We're putting corn nuts in with the butter to help it bloom, infuse in there. So now we've got like the corn butter. Full activation. I'm excited now. I'm excited again. This is the sausage that we made last time. The aromatics and the sausage component are the control. What will be different are the two breads that we use. Sausage is done, aromatics are done, we bloom the corn nuts. Right. And we're going up slightly on liquid, adding an egg. <laughs> How does it taste? Pretty bright. That's really good. Taste that. Mmm. Oh wow, heat just popped right up. You know what I kind of want to do? Get a third little pan and mix a little of that and that together. Whoa. It could even be like a ramekin. Stuffing for one. Oh my God, literally. Almost there. <laughs> While those two stuffings are in the oven. Three. Three. We're gonna make a little chili crisp. It's aromatics, it's, it's chilies. We're also putting warming spices in there to kind of play up the, the Thanksgiving-ness of this dish. How many chilies? I feel like I need to cap you at three. I think, I think probably just two. I know. Whoa. I know. Whoa. Restraint. It's Can a you Thanksgiving it? miracle. <laughs> I'm editing myself. We wanted a neutral oil. We don't want any additional flavors. We want all the flavor to come from the aromatics. It's gonna be really, really a delicious base for our chili crisp. Yep, so speaking of chilies. I'm gonna smell all of the chilies that you have. Okay. Because like these actually smell really good. These are wajillo. They can be a little bit spicy. These are commonly used in chilies where you really want the red color, so a chili colorado. They have a almost like a sweet paprika-like flavor. Pretty much any time you use dried chilies, you should stem and seed them beforehand because otherwise it's just really difficult. Seeds in these larger chilies are very woody and tannic. And so if you blend them in, they're gonna start to develop some tannic flavors yeah. and it's gonna get acrid. And in terms of chili oil, we're getting close 
sick. We're getting a little color, yeah. As soon as that stuff is crispy and just golden brown, we're gonna scoop all the solids out and then we're gonna toast our chilies in that oil. You're gonna be left with a bullet train headed straight to Flavortown. This isn't just for our stuffing or stuffing fried rice. You could stir this into your cranberry sauce, put it over your turkey. We're giving America heat. Look how beautiful and red the arbol is. And also you can see the oil is starting to like pull out color. some of those flavors. Yeah. So we're, we're changing the color of the oil. Anytime you toast chilies, they go really fast. So you just need to be really Real vigilant. Fast. Yeah. Don't walk away. They also have different toast rates. So like the ancho has more sugar in it. So that's going to go first. The arbol ha doesn't have a lot of sugar in it. So it can take a little bit more toast. It smells so good. Oh yeah. It's just to put in crushed red pepper flakes. No. You can do it. You are it's leaving boring. so much flavor behind. Each of them have such different characteristics, different heat levels, uh, different levels of earthiness, but also different levels of sugar. I feel like we need sesame seed. Uh, hello? I'm thinking. Okay. A tablespoon. Okay. A tablespoon. A tablespoon. Same thing. It's going to pull out some of the, the oils and the flavor of the sesame. Yeah. All right. Are we going to taste these guys? Oh, yeah. Oh. Even Love Child is all crispy. Oh, this looks better to me. I thought the sourdough looked a lot better than this country round looks. It's, I think plain and simple is the fact that we cubed it yeah. and we didn't tear it. I think with cornbread, you can get away with that. You're not tearing cornbread. Right. I like the flavor, but the texture of the bread is... This feels wrong. Mm -hmm. so this is the cornbread version. Ah. It's so completely different. It's so different. That's so weird. The heat is way more integrated. Cornbread is already offering a lot of flavor of its own. It's working with the other flavors. If I didn't know better, I would say this is a completely different recipe than that. Like, right. I still feel like that crumbly texture, it's not my favorite. Well, we have one more to try. Right. This is the combination of this cornbread stuffing and the uh, non-sourdough stuffing. If the cornbread had a better crunch. Fresh. I think where we're going with the chili oil and all of that, it's like, this is where that belongs. Yeah. I'm kind of not feeling that. When the whole recipe hinges on like the exact specific texture of the bread, the level of sour and the sourdough, like that's setting people up to have a hard time. Right. I, we, I feel like we're both in agreement. This it's cornbread. A, if you didn't want to make this cornbread, it would be fine with, you know, store-bought or even sweeter, like the jiffy. Cakeier. Yeah. All right. So we feel really good about this one. Yeah. Make a couple of tweaks, finish yeah. the chili oil. Let's get that in the oven. We'll finish the chili oil. Okay, and then we'll work on our fried rice situation, see where that gets us. Cool, I'm excited. This is gonna be the best one yet. For sure. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. do, 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 do. When you're in doubt, take, take a, look a look all around. around. You know I'll, I'll be there. there. Sometimes I might shout. We don't know this one that well. No, we don't. Now we're ready for magic corn powder. I just want to see if we, how far we can push the corn flavor. Look at that. Toasted hard. Ooh, that one's really toasted. Let's let Great. that cool a little bit. Okay. Uh, butter? Yes, please. Okay. Because two sticks wasn't enough. No. So the sooner we get this thing in the oven, the sooner we can finish our chili oil and then like really light this place on fire. You can taste the corn nut. Pow, pow, pow. Mm -hmm. We're gonna bake this. We're gonna pull it out, or we're gonna taste it, and it's gonna be friggin' awesome. And if this is all you wanted to do, it's a perfectly delicious- Done. Yeah, there's Done. Thanksgiving right there. We're gonna take a couple handfuls of this, put it into a really hot skillet, crisp it up. We're gonna make fried rice out of it, and then we are gonna top that with the chili oil. So in this pot, we have our infused oil. It's just super flavorful. It's kind of incredible. 
the sweetness from the shallot makes a huge difference. The ginger. The, the intensity of the, yeah, a little pungency from the ginger. This is not about just being hot. This is no. about being super flavorful. I'm just gonna add maybe like a third of that. I'm just like so happy about this idea. I mean, if nothing else, just this on its own. Like, this on its own. This is gonna be the recipe for stuffing. Yeah. This can just go in. Yeah. And this is like the kind of crisp aspect of the chili crisp now. It's really deep. It's like tobacco-y in its depth, <laughs> yeah, you know? Yeah. But there's like a ton of like fruit flavor in there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we got color. The one regret I'm having is just that like, visually, it's a little dark. We also push this far we push in the it. toasting. So I think we can pull back because we're also gonna toast it again. But the interior But the texture, interior yeah. is like great. It's, it's like, really beautiful. The corn flavor is absolutely turbocharged yeah. by the corn nut. And then you get like a little bit of heat, the seasoning's great, herb, sweetness from the veg. The moisture level is really good. Mm -hmm. I feel like we made a cornbread stuffing the way we made the simple is best dressing. We and added heat. This is not overtly Texan or Mexican. Um, and frankly, the only thing that's really Southern about it is the fact that we use cornbread. I feel like we brought together the best elements in both of them. Right. You know? Yeah. There is something I do want to try. Agave. agave. We found the dark agave. The last which, of the dark agave. I know. Thank God. So I just want to put a little bit of our chili crisp on the dressing and just see how that all plays together. Wow. God damn. <laughs> it weirdly balances it all out. Like the heat is obviously intens intensified, but that the ginger and the sweetness mm. plays so nicely with the corn. The texture is, is pretty cool because mm -hmm. that was always the thing that we were lacking a little bit with the cornbread. You stop here, you're good. Delicious. If you want to make that, great. We're here for that too. I'm really excited to see what happens when we take it one or two clicks further and see what happens when we kind of make like stuffing fried rice using this. Mm-hmm. Cup and a half in. Smash. This is stuffing extra credit, okay? Inspired by- um, This is how you win Thanksgiving, extra credit. You don't want to do this with uh, just like straight up butter because it'll burn. Clarified butter or just frankly, I use olive oil. So we're going to pull that to the side. Then we'll go with a little bit more oil. Sorry. Ghee. Ghee. Um, so we're just doing like a little aromatic base of garlic, ginger, and scallion. Egg goes in, quick little like work around in the pan. And then we can put our rice in, a little toss toss, and then I'll put a little more fat around the edges of the pan so it can find its way down between the pan and the rice. This is ideal with leftover rice. Um, I'm gonna season this with a little bit of white soy. Get some seasoning on there. Yeah then this can come right to the side with our stuffing. A little more ghee, and then we're gonna do some fast, crispy Brussels sprout leaves. This is not about doing Brussels sprouts for 20 people. This is no. like, you want fewer leaves, crispier. So if you're doing another Brussels sprout dish, just like save all your leaves as you've like cleaned them and chopped them. Good. Did you bring me a spoon? Yay. <laughs> Give me another one. I think we're good. Yeah. I love that you can see the actual little bits of sausage and sausage, stuffing. Sausage, stuffing, it's all happening in there. If you don't get it for the gram, did it even happen? Who better to gild this lily than Rick Martinez with a pinch more of the corn nut powder. We're looking at Thanksgiving stuffing fried rice. And I think what we really loved about this is that it still tastes like Thanksgiving. It's all the flavors that you're, you're used to or that you would expect, but it's just presented in a completely new and, and fun way. You know, it is very you and me. I mean, oh. like, and I think when you're cooking with someone, like whether it's Thanksgiving or, you know, even just like Tuesday night dinner, you're both bringing something to the party. It's like falling out of a flavor tree and hitting every, every branch, branch on the way down. <laughs> I'm like so excited to present this to everybody else. You're not gonna be upset by this. You know, you're, the people you're serving are gonna be really into it. Make the chili oil like that. It's so good. As a condiment, just to bring a lot of things at Thanksgiving. Yeah. yeah.
We did really good. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> we won Thanksgiving. We won Thanksgiving. Totally. Pick the squash and then pick the cooking method for that squash. Look, there's us as represented by squash. <laughs> just lie, Christina. But <laughs> just lie, pretend. This is really good. This is really delicious. I want this one. They're laughing and I have no idea why. <laughs> what is going on? <laughs>